Hello, bastard viewers and people who've never heard of me before. I'm Winkers, your professionally miserable host, and today we're looking at the Path of Exile, the Forbidden Sanctum, patch 3.20 expansion release announcement. Here we have the patch notes. I have not looked at these yet. We're going to get right into it. I can already tell right here these are going to be nerfs. That's kind of, well, I mean, strong skills. What do you expect? What was wrong with Divergent Second Wind? This is going to be exciting. Let's see. The new Challenge League. If you haven't seen the trailer, we're basically looking at a roguelike. Yeah. Kind of funny, because I just made a video with my brother about Hades and how great a game that is. I don't think me making that video had anything to do with us getting a roguelike league. That would be incredibly fast. It is a coincidence. In addition to the Challenge League, we are getting ruthless at last. So that's going to be interesting. I haven't gotten to test it myself, because I'm a small YouTuber that no one knows about. It looks interesting. Uh, I think Zizarin put it best when he said that Ruthless was content that you would engage in when you were kind of done with Path of Exile. Except for a core, probably, you know, specific part of the player base where Ruthless is probably everything they want. Actually, yeah, they actually use the word roguelike themselves, which is pretty fantastic. As for the Forbidden Sanctum, the content runs like your typical roguelike. You pick a room, you go inside, it's going to have rewards or debuffs, etc., things you have to deal with. What's very interesting, though, is there's going to be a resolve system that is kind of layered on top of your hit points. And resolve is getting hit and basically being closer to knocked out of your run, which lets them eject you from the Sanctum without killing you, which is very good for hardcore players. And honestly, it's pretty good for softcore as well. It allows the content to be difficult and rewarding without... I don't know, costing you a few hours of your time because it's so damn rippy deep, but you want to go for those rewards on your level 97 character. We are getting some new skill gems, finally. Frozen Legion is a spell that summons a melee statue, <laughs> not a totem, a statue, uh, up to six. It'll use them all based on your cooldowns and they kind of generate charges as you go. And then each statue will do a melee attack with your weapon. This is a very interesting interaction. It actually makes it like a, a use case, I think, finally for Battle Mage's Cry, among other things. But Battle Mage's Cry comes to mind. I'm very interested. In fact, I'm going to look this up right now. So here's Battle Mage's Cry. And as you can see, it does say supported skills deal less damage, which is a bit unfortunate. If it was specifically spells, we'd have something funny going on. That said, when you look at Frozen Legion as a gem, the Frozen Legion aspect where you cast and then the actual trigger effect seem to be separate. So I am interested to find out if it actually still uh, evades that line of text. If you get to Battle Mage's Cry this, and there's no downside, it's going to be ridiculously powerful. It already looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play, almost like a, a smoother General's Cry, although you could run this with General's Cry, and that's probably fantastic. You can almost double dip on General's Cry mechanics. Coming back, we have Volcanic Fissure. Volcanic Fissure seems to be Molten Strike's bigger brother. It's almost a, uh, a better clear version of Molten Strike when you look right at it. it. It does the same thing Molten Strike does, except it will send a fissure across the ground and explode at a point, so it has some range to it. If both the fissure traveling and the explosion at the end that creates the orbs can hit the same enemy, this skill could be completely busted. I don't actually know for certain though, because we don't have damage numbers. I'm assuming it's going to be okay, but considering how dominant Molten Strike was, I'm somewhat convinced it'll never be more than just good. They seem to understand how to keep this skill from getting out of control. It, we can actually go to the teaser page itself and take a look at these gems early on. We can see their, their lower level stats. Volcanic Fissure here, four additional projectiles, 110% base damage, projectiles deal 50% less damage with hits and ailment, and 60% conversion. As a comparison, Molten Strike is 185% base damage, three additional projectiles, but projectiles deal 50% less damage. This is an important detail, because it kind of tells us immediately that Volcanic Fissure is probably going to scale better with sources of increased projectiles. Next we have Cursed Ground. We don't really need to look at the gem for this one. It's basically the old Hex keystone on the tree that was removed. Essentially, you create a space of cursed area, and when enemies are in there, they have the curse. This gem is exciting, because what it does is it allows you to put a curse in an area, and as long as an enemy stays in that area, you can repeatedly hex blast them. And because Doom is no longer going to be a thing that was already teased in the manifestos, it's probably going to be a pretty decent damage situation. At least just blasting people with hex blast is going to be an option now, in a way that it really wasn't before. Additionally, we have hex bloom. If you kill a hexed enemy, it will transfer to all enemies within a certain distance when the hexed enemy dies. I don't know how big this is going to be. If it's very big, it could be exciting, especially for someone playing hex blast. Again, less having to cast a curse over and over again. You can just 
put one out and blow up everything on the screen, assuming it proliferates well enough. What's next is quite interesting, though. We're getting eight new Val skill gems, and they seem to be the melee skills, and I believe there's some ranged skills in here, Venom Gyre at least, that weren't quite as good as far as melee skills were concerned. This includes Val Molten Strike, but also Val Volcanic Fissure, which is kind of interesting. I'm excited to see what that is. Val Smite can be very exciting, because that's already a skill that gives you an aura. Caustic Arrow has always kind of been behind Toxic Rain, so it's cool to see what that's going to do. Blade Flurry has been out of its glory days forever. Cleave, they've teased, is basically a mini Headhunter effect on the Val. And then Flicker Strike, which is full anime awesomeness in the best possible way. You do a bunch of hits, and only when you finish doing the hits does the damage apply. Very much so, uh, sheathe your sword and everyone behind you gets cut in half. On the crafting front, we are getting Fracturing Orbs. That's right. Fracturing orbs. Just an orb. You slap it on your item as long as it is at least four modifiers. 25% chance to make that modifier permanent. It's going to be a lot of fun to craft with these. It's going to be a, a gamble, but like a decent gamble. And if you've got the right mod on the right item, you know, you, you roll for it with alts. You all get if you need to. You regal. You craft on garbage. And then one in four, solid gold. Additionally, we're getting fracturing shards, which makes me think this might be a harbinger related reward. Hard to say, but the, the new fracturing orb is going to have shards. It's going to be a very popular crafting item, so it's possible this could be a like a decent currency option for buying and selling with. I don't think it's going to replace anything because Chaos Orbs and Divine Orbs are so dominant for so many reasons. But typically, the market is decided with by currency items that are used frequently. And Fracturing Orbs are going to get used a lot. We're also getting the usual new unique items, new div cards, uh, two new Atlas memories, which is a bit interesting. The Calandra's Touch Unique Ring has been added to the Core Drop Pool, which means it appears anywhere, but probably exceptionally rare. And some of the Eldritch Currency got new art. Let's see what else we've got. One little note I found while scrolling down. The Carcass Map has seen its star rise slightly, as the Nurse card can now be dropped there. Interestingly, we have a new Problem Solution section for the Atlas Tree, which I do not believe was teased in any manifestos. This is actually a massive change. You will no longer be able to get extra rewards from running Pinnacle Bosses uh, through specking properly into your atlas. They've removed that so that people don't feel that they have to, which that's one of those changes that is probably best for the long-term health of the game. On the flip side, we are getting increased chances of getting league content. Uh, the clusters for league content are being improved, and we're getting a new keystone passive, this is very interesting, that causes scarabs to give you increased pack size. There's going to be some fun that can be had with that. Hailing from the Curse Manifesto, we now have some specific numbers and some of the changes made to various ways of uh, automating the application of your curses and hexes. Specifically, Hex Touch and Awaken Hex Touch now have 35% less effect. Blasphemy has 25% less effect. Honestly, this is much less than I was expecting. I think Blasphemy is going to be pretty strong, and I'm, I'm glad they didn't go overboard with it because auras are crazy right now. Blasphemies have to be pretty good to compete because that slot is already very valuable, just the, the ability to reserve mana. At 25% less effect, I think they're actually going to be okay, in many situations at least. Well, I think they're going to be okay, actually more specifically, because getting your curse limit higher is a little easier than it used to be. And if you combine that with, say, a Heretic's Veil and some other reservation effects that you can't get for auras, you might be able to run a lot of Blasphemy curses. In the same vein, Hexes Applied by Bane now have 25% less effect. I think that's not going to be felt at all, and it should still be just like a straight better feeling against boss, uh, major bosses. We have more curse specifics here. Uh, there seems to be a nerf across the board to the actual base stats. We were expecting this. They're pretty substantial on the surface, but this is basically what they meant by curses would be worse against normal enemies, because when you remove the penalties against bigger enemies, these numbers are actually massive. As an example, 44% of flammability before would have been reduced to 14.6% against the Pinnacle boss. Now it is 36%. That is a big upgrade. That is more than twice as much effect. It's huge. It's ginormous. I'm excited about it. You probably have to cast it yourself, but even if it's being reduced by the Hex Touch or Blasphemy support, it's still a lot more than it was on the enemies where it really matters, and that's going to be great. And a, another smaller note, Temp Chain's base duration has been upped. I don't think this is a big one. Temp Chains is one where you kind of just want to always have it on your target, so you're probably going to either use the Keystone or a Blasphemy to make sure that it is just there eternally. More curse specifics. We now have the new cluster nodes that have been teased. Very, very excited for these because they're going to allow us to 
Apply our curses to hexproof enemies with a little bit of investment through the cluster jewel system. These are going to be huge. A lot of them here at the start give damage. Some of them give slightly more interesting stats though. Plus one maximum elemental resistance if you've killed a curse enemy recently is very interesting. It's kind of a situational buff so it won't be that great, but something like recover 2% of life here for uh, exploit weakness on your vulnerability curse. That's uh, that's some mapping survivability. Anyone who's had gain life on kill of a percentage number knows how powerful that can be in just like making your build feel better and avoid crazy spiky situations because generally you're getting the most life back after the most possible damage can come in and that's it's just a good synergy. Punishment giving culling strike also pretty good. Uh, unnerved on temp chain so now temp chains gives damage and crit chance with enfeeble that's kind of a weird mixture but you know what it's all happy to see especially because the hex proof is the big thing that you care about. These side benefits are all just gravy. Oh boy. Endgame unique weapons. When they talked about this in the teaser video, or rather the trailer video, I was a little bit unsure. But then you go to the Sanctum page and you actually look at what they've done. Starforge is thick. God damn, he's back. Our boy is back. Soul Taker is huge. Holy hell, they buffed both the physical components on this item. Those those items stacked together to create a bigger value. I don't need to tell you that, you probably already understand that, but this item was already still kind of used in certain builds, especially when you needed to just fix mana in a big way. But now it's it's like, this is actually some damage going on. You can fit this in so many more builds now. But let's get to the specifics. At Series Disfavor, huge damage boost, plus 10 weapon range instead of plus 2, and 30% quality of socketed support champs. That's bonkers. This this right here, it's kind of hard to overstate. This is actually a lot of damage. There's a lot of support gems that for, I believe, 20% quality, they give you 10 plus percent increased damage. You multiply that by fives, and it's, I mean, 50% increased damage on top of a weapon that's already strong and lets you do things with strike skills. Or, honestly, Vengeance. If you didn't know, Vengeance has some really funny interactions with weapon range. Vino's huge damage increase. Bloodseeker, huge damage increase. That's very exciting considering this weapon is usually used for its defensive component of instant life leech. That's gonna that's gonna be some survivability for the builds that can fit it. Divinarius, huge spell damage, bigger crit multi. This needed to happen. I have to say it needed to happen. If you look at the way modern spellcasting implements work in Path of Exile, there's all these gem level stacking stats, there's all these uh, craftable stats like the It That Fled mods from Betrayal that are just very potent. You need to have big numbers on your uniques now for them to compete, and these are some big numbers. That is a lot of crit multi for bosses. Like a tremendous amount. That is a lot of spell damage. It's a one-hander. You get a shield with this. You know that, right? <laughs> Essentia Sanguis lost its physical component, which honestly is smart. You don't want to have a split identity on your unique weapon. You kind of need to homogenize it a little bit so it's easier to build around. And the reduced maximum recovery per second for energy leech is gone. That's a big deal, considering this is what gives you that leech energy shield in kind of an uncapped way. And the damage is better, at least if you if you can build around the, the raw lightning. This is a huge item. This is... I, I don't even know. It's, it's energy shield slayer in a can. Or the can opener, rather. Kingmaker, more damage. I think this was expected because they're making Soul Taker better. I don't know that this is going to be a meaningful change for the damage of, say, an Animate Guardian. Or if it's enough to get someone to use Kingmaker? But, I mean, thank you for at least buffing it while making Soul Taker probably a little rarer, which is going to be tough on those people. Kitava's Feast has its socketed support gems supported by level 30 melee splash. This is a slightly bigger deal than it looks because Kitava's Feast was already a pretty decent unique item. And level 30 melee splash is big. In fact, I just looked up how big and it takes it from 72% more AoE to 87%. You're going to screen clear with Kitava's Feast if you build it right. I don't know that that makes it good enough to use, but for a mapping build with the other stats it has, it's very possible. Ah, here we go. Lion Eyes Glare. Increased physical damage basically doubled, and even the added physical damage slightly buffed. Lion Eyes Glare is kind of a near and dear to my heart weapon, because back when I was a young noob who didn't know any better, this was the bow I would usually crutch on to get something going, because it wasn't terribly rare, and it, it worked. So seeing that stronger is very exciting for me. It, it is almost kind of an ascendancy in a can item as well. It gives you a bunch of mana, which you shouldn't underestimate. Uh, hits can't be evaded, which gives you a new aspect to like work into your build overall. Far shot, which is the ascendancy in a can stat. 
I don't know if this is going to make it good. I'm just not a bow guy. But it's it's a pretty significant damage buff. It's probably twice as strong as it was before. Morohi Erki. This, this was a weapon that actually kind of had a niche already, and they made it better. Like, significantly better. The minimum is now, or the, the maximum is now the minimum, and the new maximum is another 100% over what it used to be. It's it's a big damage item. You still have to get over the, like, ridiculously low attack speed, but if you do, it slaps. And that's great. Savior actually does some damage now, in addition to being insane with the effect that it provides. Replica Soul Taker is gone. I was not expecting that. But I can't even tell you what it does, so I don't know that it was very good. Starforge now goes up to 450%. Not not the glory days of 500%, but still very good. Very usable, I should say. Now, Varanastra, bigger fizz damage, percent roll. Kind of a big deal, because there's already some chicanery that goes into this item that you can do, where you take tons and tons of masteries to beef it up. Assuming Claw shenanigans weren't completely gutted, Varanastra might be pretty strong now. It's hard to say, because I don't know if people ever really figured out how to make that work. But it is a fun item to look at, so hopefully you can do something with it now. Uh, Voidforge. Voidforge is now just Facebreaker, but better, as a random elemental damage effect. So not only does it enable Trinity by default, but its max roll is bigger, bigger <laughs> than Facebreaker. That's a big deal, because you do not have to use Facebreaker with this. It has a Fizz roll built into it. Just the scaling ceiling of this weapon is huge. Basically, I, if I ever build a Facebreaker character, I'm going to be like, and at some point, I'll get a Voidforge and use that instead. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, Voltaxic Rift. 1 to 600 to 750 lightning damage. That's a lot. 100% of lightning damage converted to chaos damage. Damn. Never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. Honestly, I, th I thought they were so deep in the hole on that one that they were never going to make that change. I just believed it couldn't happen. And yet here it is on a weapon that is also buffed in every other way. Chaos damage can still shock, obviously. That hasn't been removed. Just the 10% chance to shock inherent has been removed from the bow. I, I really got to wonder what you can do with this. Is there... Is the Voltaxic Rift Battle Mage build possible now? Is kind of a question, right? Every everyone's going to ask that. I'd like to think it is. I haven't run the numbers, but I mean, that's that's a huge amount of added damage, and turning all of your lightning damage into chaos damage is a big effect, because Wither exists. And there's, there's even Chaos Pen on the tree now. Very cool. We're getting some new options to deal with monster life regeneration. This has never been the biggest deal to me, but I know for some people it is it is the worst feeling in the world. Uh, if you upgrade the Soul of Rislasta Pantheon, you get uh, hit an enemy recently, 50% reduced life regeneration rate. That's pretty good. Better than that, though, is that the 60% increased life recovery from Flask when used on low life is no longer an upgrade. It's just on the base Pantheon, so that base Pantheon actually got buffed, and it's it's actually a little bit competitive now. Additionally, the life mastery for increased life recovery from Flask 1 on low life has been removed and replaced with nearby enemies have 50% reduced life regeneration rate, which, if you stack the two of these, you kind of get the benefit of both, except enemies don't regenerate life anymore. So that's kind of neat. Uh, if you were stacking them before, you lost a little bit of increased life recovery from Flask 1 on low life, but I don't really know how much of that was being used by the player base. Maybe there's an interaction there that was ruined. I'm not sure. Holy shit. Tribal Fury no longer has strike skills target one additional nearby enemy. It now has melee strike skills deal splash damage to surrounding targets. What? <laughs> and, and we're getting target one additional enemy as an attack mastery. This does come at the cost of strike skills target additional enemies can do so from 30% further away being removed, which was nice for clear speed. But um, I, I, I have to assume built-in melee splash and plus one strike are going to be a lot better for clear speed than this ever was and probably ever could be. This is so exciting. You can get plus two baseline so easy with free splash. Oh my god. There's, there's no reduced damage on the splash either. It's just like you do it. Whew. Wow. I'm, I'm probably League starting a strike skill. Not even kidding. I love strike skills. Especially when you get them working. They feel so good. Oh, Pious Path has been nerfed. I think this was expected, even though a lot of people really didn't want it. Luckily, the general effect of this is still very good. 50% increased effect of Consecrated Ground sounds like a minor nerf to the amount of regen you're getting to Consecrated Ground, but the biggest effect of this is that you just lost... 25% of your 75% reduced effective curses on you. If you can get over that, you're probably not going to feel this nerf very much. It's very 
light. It's it's a level-headed, level-handed nerf. On the other hand, this is not level-headed or level-handed. Spectral Helix has been deleted from the game, un unironically. It does it does sixty per it does sixty percent of the damage it used to. I'm not sure if they thought that was a good idea because it's not like everyone was playing Spectral. Well, actually, a lot of people were playing Spectral Helix, but it's not like everyone in the meta was playing Spectral Helix. There was better stuff. And Lightning Conduit got nerfed. I know this was expected. Lightning Conduit was very strong. I don't know how it's going to be after this, but it is a pretty sizable nerf. It's not 60% of the strength that it used to be nerf, but it's it's pretty sizable. Lightning Strike. Yeah, this one was definitely anticipated. I mean, it's it, this, this is a skill that actually has been dominant in the meta for quite a while. Interestingly, Lightning Strike is really being hit particularly in the clear category. Which, I mean, that's very good. I, I was worried they were going to nerf the damage and just kind of remove your ability to fight strong enemies efficiently, which the, the build did kind of well with a lot of investment. Instead, I mean, it just fires two additional projectiles instead of seven, which that's that's a big nerf. It is. It's a huge nerf. But I think it can be worked around. It's going to be hard to say. I, I, didn't, I didn't play a lot of Lightning Strike, so I could just be talking out of my ass here. It's, it's a significant nerf to clear speed. There's no other way around that. You might have to run a multiple projectile support gem, which would be a nerf to the damage. But in return, you'd get your projectiles back. Oof. It's gonna be tough. The, it's it's one of the... Honestly, I'm gonna call this a bad nerf, just because of this right here. Nerfing the additional projectiles from the helmet enchant is one thing. But with this here, this is now mandatory. That's, that's pretty rough. Like, it's mandatory, because that gets you up to four. And I think you've got to be there before you can really even consider to start using it. So Lightning Strike is probably in a lot of trouble. That said, it's easier to get plus one strike, so maybe there's something there. Divergent second win was changed, apparently due to irreconcilable bugs. Uh, if there was an abuse here that let you do something crazy for recovery, I didn't know about it. Interesting. Wow, Onslaught is now a buff. Uh, if you didn't know, they say it here, Onslaught wasn't a buff because the effect was just you have Onslaught. Now Onslaught is a buff, which means that buff effect affects it. So Ichimonji, or here they say Flask Effect modifiers... Which, Silver Flask specifically, that's kind of interesting. You could actually get a lot of attack, cast, and movement speed off of that. Even more than you were already getting on a Raider, for instance. The Withering Step interaction with Elusive is gone. That's sad. That said, I've played builds that make use of Elusive that don't use Withering Step, and they still felt good. So I'm sure a lot of people are very upset about this, but personally, I'm not too worried about it. Also, the interaction kind of under undermines the downside of Elusive, so Elusive gets to stay strong now, instead of just being removed from the game, which was probably the alternative. Uh, Ancestor Totem buff affects Linger for 3 seconds. That is a bit interesting. Kind of a, I would call it a band-aid fix to what people are saying is some fatigue about having to have Ancestor Totems and all of their melee builds, because I mean, it's just, it's really not a great time to always have to put those damn things on for the buff that they give. Having it Linger is nice though, because that means that if something immediately kills your totem, well, at, at least you still get the buff for a little while, you know? Oh my goodness. When I started reading this line of text, I didn't have a lot of hope for what it was going to say. But they are flat out giving us Tainted Orbs of Fusing a la Scourge League. That is exciting. Easy Six Links are back on the menu, boys. Ah, okay, I was, I was right earlier. The Fracturing Orb is a new Harbinger reward. That's going to make farming Harbingers very exciting again. They were kind of down in the dumps after the Divine Do Exalt change, but Fracturing Orbs are probably going to be big money. I, I have to assume they're going to be big money, because the first step of a lot of crafts, if, if you don't need a specific influence on them, it's going to be Fracture. And let's, let's be honest, that's pretty much going to be gloves, boots, body armor, and helm every single time, and then... For a lot of weapons, it's the same, right? A, a, a plus one all skill gems, or plus one all spell skill gems caster weapon is pretty much always going to beat out uh, an influence if it's fractured, unless you are at, like, insanely high investment levels. And even then, still not really, because not every influence, or not every build needs an influence for that optimal stat. Corrosive Hunger got nerfed, which is fantastic. Uh, the rate that it stacks up has gone down. I'm guessing this is kind of a buff we're getting as a side effect of Ruthless, where they've kind of realized that without using a movement skill, this fight sucks. <laughs> I mean, it, a lot of people already think it sucks. I think it's fine, because I'm very tolerant of just mechanics like that. But yeah, this is great, because spawning really far from the portal 
or having a hard time locating it because the ooze just isn't moving in a way that makes sense to you at the time can make this fight feel very punishing, especially early on in the league when you're first getting to it. Bestiary party play has been nerfed. I'm okay with this because it's it's one of those it's one of those situations where okay yes. Bestiary party play isn't quite as good. It's still better, right? You are still getting more beasts per Einhar mission than you would normally. But the way it was before, it was insane. It was, it's actually an inflation thing where like everyone else who was getting beasts without doing party play was probably just experiencing way less of them and not really seeing the value of Einhar the way these other players were. Fortunately, Karox complete the map missions for unique maps. Got a bit of a nerf. That's fair. It was very easy to find unique maps through Kirok, but I mean, I, I kind of hate that they're changing this because it, it was fun to do it. I guess the rewards could be a little strong at times, and they also trivialized like, the value of unique maps, but man, this is a bit sad. The guaranteed rogue marker drop from Act 6 is gone. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. It's kind of a, a, kind of a weird one, weird champ going on. I'm not sh I'm not sure why they need to do that, to but to be fair, whenever I got the markers, I wouldn't ever do it right away, right? Maybe on hardcore, you do it to like farm some some jewelry. So this is kind of sad for hardcore players. I'm not gonna lie, actually, because you could you could repeat that first one over and over again. But it's still possible to get the markers in Act Six. So I I guess if you really needed to do it, you could you could find them that way because they're not that rare. I feel it's important to mention Kirak League mods now that we know that Harbinger is gonna be the only source of fractured orbs. Well, I shouldn't say only source, but it's going to be the probably primary source of Fractured Orbs. Harbingers for six Chaos Orbs might always be worth it. I'm not going to lie. If you're fully invested, depending on the rarity, this this could be like a you pay six Orbs on your maps for a while, and then you get all your money back and then some pretty much guaranteed. Because those things are going to be used a lot. Here in the bug fixes, we have the minimum Power Frenzy and Endurance charges going negative bug being fixed. If you didn't know what this did, it essentially allowed you to discharge permanently over and over again. It was some weird error. I'm not sure exactly how the bug worked or why, but it allowed people to just stack up a bunch of negative charges through Calandra negative jewelry and yeah, they could just keep discharging. I think that was expected. It's gone now. If you were using that, I'm sorry. I think you were expecting it as well too though. I mean, that was that was quite the broken interaction. In this next section, we're going to take a moment to look at some of the other things that have been teased uh, a little more in depth with some better presentation. The Entropic Devastation Assassin's Mitts are being added to the game. This was the Gucci item? Oh man, I hope I didn't get that wrong. Uh, it grants Call of Steel and it gives you a way to inflict Impale with your spells consistently. It also gives 50% increased effect of the Impale. This is kind of a very interesting item. I shouldn't even say kind of. This is a very interesting item because... Currently, if you look at a physical spell build, they're usually converting it to something, like Cold Reap is a good example. This gives you a reason not to do that. You do have to be crit invested, but I mean, why not? Impale is a pretty big damage source. It gives you 10% reflected physical damage on your next 5 hits, which is more or less 50% more damage as long as you're hitting quickly enough. That is, I think it has to be 5 hits in 8 seconds, so something like Blade Vortex makes very easy use of this, uh, overlapping with Reap using the Awaken Spell Cascade support, probably also has a very easy time doing this. Something with Unleash has a very easy time doing this. You just have to be critting. But it's it's good. This is going to be a lot of damage for those kinds of builds, and it's a reason not to immediately go into an elemental conversion, which I like a lot. The Eternal Damnation Agate Amulet. This item, I was seeing getting laughed at actually quite a bit in, uh, in chat on this live stream. I think people might be sleeping on this a little bit. It has some... It has some synergies that are very exciting. I think the most specific item to look at would be Replica Loreweave. Replica Loreweave with an Eternal Damnation is going to be kind of silly. Because Replica Loreweave, if you didn't know, caps your elemental resistance at 72%. This is actually a buff when you combine it with this item, because you're only getting minus 3 to all max res instead of minus 5. If you can get your Chaos Res up, this is the equivalent of wearing that Replica Loreweave with all of the crit chance and all of the raw life, and all of the raw mana, and all of the raw ES, and the elemental damage, and all the other good stuff. You get that with what is effectively 82% all maximum elemental resistances. That's a huge turnaround from the survivability situation of Replica Loreweave normally. This item also has applications elsewhere. I, I believe, assuming you can meet the Chaos Resistance requirements, 
This item ultimately ends you up at about 80% all max res. So it says minus five, but if you're fulfilling all the requirements with, you know, maxed elemental res and then 75% total chaos res, you're actually getting closer to 80% all res. That's pretty good. That's not terrible. Uh, I believe the benefit continues scaling better as you get more all res on top of that too, if you want to go even further with it. But I mean, that's a lot of investment. I'm not sure how you would do that. It is good though. This is a good item. A lot of people are sleeping on it. I think you're going to see some very, very strong builds that are able to get a little bit more damage out of pieces of gear that you normally don't see used so much anymore because it just gives you that big bonus where you're not supposed to have it. The Progenesis Amethyst Flask. I honestly looked at this and I assumed it was a mana flask because of the artwork on it. Uh, it's very Maven inspired, which makes me think this is going to be something of a Maven drop. But it's, it's a unique Amethyst Flask. I had to double check. You go double check too. Go look at it. This item is the second unique Amethyst Flask in the entire game. The only other option was the Etsiri Flask. What it does is, I mean, it's fine. It is an Amethyst Flask, which means that it chaos fixes, and it gives you some survivability, which makes it very easy to fit into most builds. If you have any sort of strong regen going on, this probably feels a lot better. It's, it makes it harder to kill you quick, you know? And let's be honest, usually when you get one shot, it's not just one attack, right? It's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole shitload of other stuff. You know what's going on. It feels like a one shot. It happens instantly. This keeps it from happening instantly, so I kind of like it. I don't know how strong it's going to be. It looks like it might be even like a junk drop from Maven, like the, the standard item that you get most of the time. But it, it looks okay. I can see it being used. Now this is an item with some hair on its chin. I honestly don't even care about the profane ground part. I know that's a pretty decent effect. Just the ability to have the... Just the ability to have Templar, you know, Inquisitor stuff going on on any character is really exciting to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, wow. It's, it's, it's the most iconic part of the Inquisitor Ascendancy in a can. And you have to think about everything that Consecrated Ground does to really appreciate this, because it's not just some life regen, it's also 50% reduced effect of curses. That's a lot. That is a lot, a lot. That is so good for fixing so many things, and it's really not hard to meet the requirement for a lot of builds. I think this is going to be very popular on everything where strength is your highest attribute, you can fit this in and probably have a good reason for it. Now, if you don't know what Profane Ground does, it reduces enemies' resistances by 10%, all of them, even Chaos, and it increases their chance to be critically hit by an additional plus one base chance. This half of it is also very, very strong. There's, there's no way around that. That's a tremendous amount of damage, especially if you stack it with, say, Bottled Faith, you know? Fire Song, Unique Crimson Jewel. Honestly... Yeah, this is this is kind of what I want to see from a unique jewel. If you fix Ignite Duration to be 100% reduced, it now applies to everything. And that's an important note, because it says all elemental ailments. It doesn't say Chill Shock and Freeze. It says all. So Sap and the others, if they're showing up on weird Arch Nemesis mods. Takes them all. Very good. Honestly, very nice. Kind of kind of a neat tool. I don't know how many builds are going to like take this as their end-all be-all, but it's it's pretty good. And lastly, we'll be talking about Sanctified Relics coming in the Sanctum League. These are kind of important. You find them in the League mechanic. They've kind of already told us they're only going to be here for the League. But what they do is very interesting, because these buffs you see being applied by that Relic are applied outside of the Sanctum as well. Maximum resistances and increased effect of buffs like Onslaught are very exciting on a character. They just are. I'm kind of excited to see what else they can do. I've seen on some of the Relics, you can get things like plus one additional strike target and all sorts of other neat effects. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of optimistic. I I don't love the concepts of borrowed power. All right, I lived through World of Warcraft. It's not the best feeling in the world. But Path of Exile is a different game. It's much more transient in nature. So I think this is going to work out a lot better. You kind of want things to be different in the league environment than they are in standard. And I'm sure these are going to go to standard when the league ends. So standard will get to play with them for all time once we're done with them. It's kind of a cool little last note that they fit in. Uh, according to them, it says unmodifiable, but Chris Wilson teased about them potentially being modifiable in a Sanctum run, which again is going to work like a roguelike. So you're probably going to do a lot of them. It's probably going to be hard. Probably going to be a lot of people who can't finish it and complain because they saw someone else finish it who's played 10 times as much as them this league. And we're going to have to deal with that crap again. But otherwise, it's a pretty good looking league. Let's end off on one very last important note though. These 
are very nice looking supporter packs. They have all the cool stuff and all the bells and whistles. But remember, remember, please, practice some diligent consumer practices yourself. If you're the type of person who likes to play through the campaign and do a little bit of mapping, you're probably going to be able to look at this stuff and buy it early and be like, yeah, I had a great time. I want to support the game. If you're a no-lifer like me, who plays all the time, and who's been kind of frustrated with the last few leagues, please hold your wallet until you've gotten to maps and experienced the game. These are going to be there till the next league. You can make your support known then. Try not to send the wrong message, because as much as I love GGG, as much as I believe in them as a company, it's always possible for them to pick up bad habits, because we express bad habits with how we spend money on their game. And we got to send them the message that a better game needs more sales. If the game's good, I will probably be buying a supporter pack this league. Because I'm pretty optimistic and it looks like it's going to be fun. And all the stuff that's been teased so far sounds good to me. But I'm going to wait until I've seen for sure. And I, I hope everyone else does the same thing as well. Anyway, have a good one, Exiles. <laughs> <laughs>